Talking about uh, playing humans and the psychology involved in it, now for a long time, a lot of these elite tournaments have the same players, so you've been playing amongst each other. Do you feel that at some point you know each other well, the kind of personalities you have, and does that play any role in your preparation against these players? Well, you can't pinpoint anything. You, you get used to the players at some level, so at some point they feel familiar, but I can't describe that feeling anymore. They, they feel slightly familiar. And that's more obvious to you when you play someone completely different because then it hits you that you're not able to predict or something, you're not able to guess what they're going to do next. Players themselves keep adapting. Everyone goes back, tries to change a few things and comes. So they're also not showing the exact same face over and over. What separates, say, the top grandmasters from the world's very elite players? The ability to take slightly better decisions uh, at crunch moments. Uh, I think there's a hell of a lot of depth in chess and it's much harder to uh, pinpoint this gap. As you'll see in uh, a tournament like Gibraltar, uh, that gap isn't that big. It's, it's still there, but uh, you have to prove it every day. Yeah, but you said this um, uh, quite interesting thing that um, about that ability to take a decision or maybe push a little further. So these things, do you think they're innate in nature or because they're obviously working as hard. I mean somebody who's a 2700 to someone mm -hmm. who's around a 2800, they're putting in those many hours of work, they've obviously put in that much of effort. So do you think it's an innate quality or how does this come across that uh, that the difference is actually quite... I think, quite no, I, I think it's very much acquired. Mm -hmm. uh, once you play a few top tournaments, you'll, you'll get the hang of it. Actually it's one of the problems in chess that um, the depth is increased a lot. So there are a lot of good players um, looking for a few spots. I mean, if you see the candidates, there are always names you think, oh, I wish they'd also been there. You look at uh, top tournaments, you think, well, it could have been more interesting if all these other guys had been in there. And maybe that also has something to do with why Swiss tournaments are getting uh, more popular again. Those Swiss tournaments are unpredictable. They're the only ones where you can uh, accommodate the depth that's available in chess today. Vishy, moving on to something else. Now, with with Akhil in your life and uh, having a family. Uh, is that something that has changed your outlook towards things or priorities in any way? No, he doesn't really conflict with uh, my chess life. I mean, it doesn't come down to him or my chess or something like that. Um, I mean, if you ask me, is family or work more important? It's a meaningless question. They don't really conflict that much. Uh, but you have to find uh, time for both. But I enjoy, uh, I enjoy it a lot. It's, it's a very special experience. Uh, I have so much fun with him and in a way he's also a, a kind of stress buster. And has he taken to chess at all? He, he likes the we gave him a chess set in pieces and he likes that he'll set up the pieces very well and so on. But so far he's uh, not gotten very far. I mean he's learnt a few of the uh, rules but um, he's into lots of other things. What is your opinion and take on this whole chess in schools and chess with kids becoming... Uh, uh, do, you, do you believe that it's actually something that, that helps you besides even if you decide not to take it up as a profession? It trains certain very obvious skills. I mean, just to uh, repeat what they are. One of the first things every chess player learns is you can't take back something. So it, teach, it forces you in a habit which is especially not natural to kids. As a kid, no matter which game you're giving you, your first thing is to let me try it, not let me learn the rules, let me think about it and let me... So, it's it's a natural impulse um, and I think this moderates it a little bit. You you learn that, wait, you know, once I've given away a piece, I don't get it back. Once I do something, you, you know, you have to uh, think before doing something. Uh, so, to weigh your decision making. And then slowly it trains your memory because you're forced to recall, uh, uh, you're forced to organize games, see them, try to understand what's relevant, apply them, all that. Your ability to sit and work on one problem without uh, multitasking and so on. So at a chessboard, you have thing. things like this are very useful. And it turns out they're very useful for your studies as well, because it's a very similar thing. Even in, in studies, when you're learning your subject, the learning process is very similar. So um, it also gives a lot of confidence uh, to children. I mean, they sometimes when they've done a, played a good chess game, 
they'll go back to their school and they'll feel more confident about dealing with that. That helps as well. So I'm a strong supporter. You know, we have the NIT Mind Champions Academy in India, um, 17,000 schools, uh, one and a half million uh, students. So um, we are implementing this project uh, for 13 years already. And um, I, it's, it's really one of my uh, legacies that I hope to keep building on. Do you also do anything to keep yourself? Do you uh, see the connection between being absolutely physically fit, the stamina required now? Yes, I do. Uh, I, I pay some attention to my fitness. I try to um, uh, do something, if not every day, every other day. But um, I'm a bit hesitant to say I do it only for the chess. Uh, it seems a part of a healthy life, no matter what you do. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Rishi.